Jesus showed up very powerfully at 12 years. Do you remember Jesus at 12 years? See him lost in the city. See him after a few days, he's found in the temple talking with the elders. And they were amazed at the wisdom that he shared. Do you see Jesus in that temple? Young boy, 12 years. He had already finished the Torah. He's already gone through all the training in the Jewish tradition. <clears throat> He'd already finished all the, all the memorization of scripture then. But after 12 years, we don't see him again. Jesus, wherever he went, we don't see him again. The scriptures don't tell us what's happening about him between 12 years and, you know, 30 years. The scriptures are silent. And by the way, everybody has their own silent years. We don't hear what's going on with you. <laughs> but he shows up at 30 years. And when Jesus shows up at 30 years, he was ready and prepared by the Lord, by the Father. And for three and a half years, he did such a powerful ministry and assignment that even now we are talking about him. Why am I saying this? Because you still have your three and a half years that are still ahead of you. Three years and a half of impact. Mm. So I want you to accept that the best days are ahead of you. Amen. Glory to God. Our subject is still how we can access grace. Grace is God's love in action. Whatever God did in Christ, whatever God did in Christ is a manifestation of his grace. But we also know, secondly, grace is also resident in vessels here on the earth. And the ascension gifts, the fivefold ministry, are graces. In the last season, we used to say, this man has an anointing. Hear yeah, I me. Mean, now we can also say, this man has grace. And you can also take it further. This is grace. Resident in that man. Are we together? And we have said before that grace is given to each man. Every believer in the body of Christ must begin to appreciate the grace of God in their lives. Praise God. And we have also said grace is, can be multiplied. Peter said to the church in the diaspora, grace and peace be multiplied to you. So these series of messages are just preparing us to experience the multiplication of grace in our lives so that we shall do more and accomplish more before Jesus returns. Are you ready for that? And yesterday in the pastor's meeting here, we had a powerful time. Okay, you touched the button, brother. No, that's good. Mark that button with red so that you always be touching it because now you brought my sound to the right place. Yesterday we said uh, amazing things about the grace of God. You know, as we shared with the pastors in the empowerment seminar, and one of the things we said greatly is that now anointing must be devolved from the pulpit. How many of you know one of the greatest miracles of Kenya is devolution? Kupereka maendeleo wapi? Mashinani. Sasa anointing to itoe hapa? Tupeleka wapi? Kwa viti. Uko mumeka. Whatever happens with the spirit of God on the man of God now is being distributed to those who used to be called laymen, lay people. We are shifting that phrase. I'm not lay. Neither are you lay. You are no longer untrained. The church is training believers to take up the mantle and run with the grace of God. And grace will be multiplied. Devolution of anointing, devolution of grace. Take it up to the people. And not all of you are anointed to minister behind a pulpit. And we've said that before. But you are ministering in the business. You are ministering that company where you're working. You're the pastor there. You're a minister there. You know, demonstrate through your character. Demonstrate through your testimony. Demonstrate through your witness that Jesus Christ is alive. He is not in the grave. He is alive. 
and you, he's alive in you, praise God. So, there are ways in which, therefore, men and women of God, listen, anything we receive from Christ, we receive by faith, glory to God. Salvation is by faith, hallelujah. Even when Paul writes to the Galatians, he says, when the miracles were worked in your midst, were they worked by the works of law or by the hearing of faith? It was through the healing of faith that miracles were done. Praise God. But we also now know when you have come into the kingdom and you have come to the body of Christ, you can also access and receive grace that is a resident on a man of God or a woman of God. And yesterday we were talking that through relational connections. Everybody say through relational connections. Now, you see, you, Sister Kesha, you've come from Pakistan just to follow me for two weeks. So, because I'll be going to Kajado, you're coming to Kajado. So, by being here two weeks and following this man, so whatever I carry, may something be dropped in you. So that when you go back home, you have something you have received from grace. But if you walked with me for 10 years, okay, what do you think will happen? Huh? Something will happen. Now, you guys are only coming one hour every day. That's good. Welcome to the lunch hour. Tell your neighbor you can also receive something. So I want to show you in scripture again and again until this message gets into your spirit so that you begin to prepare your heart and prepare yourself that you still have an opportunity to become better, to become greater, to become wiser, and to also move in the grace of God and also move in the power of God and grace that is being shared by ascension gifts, you can also share in the same. For you too are partakers with me of this grace as Paul says in Philippians 1.7. But now let me use Old Testament example. I thank God for Old Testament because these truths have been there in scripture for so long and we see how God has transformed people even in the past. Glory to God. Let's look at Genesis 14, verse 13. And then we go to First Samuel. Go to Genesis 14 and verse 13. Let's read the scriptures. And God bless all the men of God that I saw came in here. Apostle Bloomby, God bless you. Live forever, son. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Amen. You know, there are men who are moving the nations. And one of them walked into the service. And it's good. Don't worry. Even you, when we shall see what God is doing through you, we shall also talk about you. Thank you, Jesus. And it, are we there? Genesis 14, verse 13, brother. Uh, verse 13, 1, 3. Then one, uh, you know, um, if we read the whole of this chapter, we'll, we'll waste, not waste time, but we'll take a lot of time. Let me read, and then one of them escaped. Okay, that's in the middle of the battle. Let me just show you. Let's read from verse, uh, okay, quickly. Shikaya. Let's read from verse, uh, he escaped, go to verse uh, 14, the next verse, so that it, it is easy. Now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 what? Trained servants who had been born where? His own house and went in pursuit as far as, as far as done. Now hold there. Now Abram, you know Lot, Lot was a very problematic boy. Do you remember this boy? This young man in the chapter before, he's just messed up. He came along, he was not among the people who are called. It's Abraham who was called. And Lord just came along. And Lord, instead of staying with his, with his senior uncle, you know, and staying there and behaving well, he began, his cows began competing with the cows of Abraham. And there was noise. And Abraham said, seriously, I am not called, with my calling and anointing, I am not called to fight, to uh, have, you know, strife and contentions. You know, I can, I can lose everything I got, and the God who gave me can give it back. So he told Lord, Fanya Ivi, Badara sisi tusukumani hapa. 
You know, and that's what most ministers don't know what to do because some of the people have come around them because they have preached one service and people are shouting more on the right than on the left. Then they begin to trouble the man of God. You know, so Abraham told Lot, do this. Eh? Choose whichever way you want to go. If you go south, I'll go north. If you go to the mountains, I'll go to the valleys. And Lot chose the better parts of all the inheritance that Abraham had and he went towards Sodom. Mm. By the way, many people who leave church, if they did not leave properly, they have gone on their way to Sodom. Okay, we'll talk about that next time. So, what happened? Later, Abraham is, the scripture is saying, Lot is a brother. He should have said he's a rebel. He's a rebel, but he's a brother. Because fathers have a big heart to still accommodate these guys who are messing and going and when they get in trouble, we'll still come to deliver them. May God give us such great fathers like Abraham. They can still call Lot a brother. Now, that's not a point. We are just passing through there. But the point is, this man, Abraham, had 318 trained servants born in his own house. He only Jeshi Every church should have his own trained servants. Did you hear what I said? Every ministry should train believers until they come to a place they can do exploits. They can do wonders. They can be mobilized for major ministerial you know, uh, expeditions. Glory to God. 300 born in his own house. Of course, there are servants who are working in Abraham's house and everybody had his own wife and all these guys, but there was a specific training that was going on. And this is a long time ago. This is long time ago. This is Old Testament, my friend. We can use this because all scripture is inspired of God. It's good for training. It's good for instruction. Glory to God. Whatever happened in Abraham's house, we can use it even uh, thousands of years later. Glory to God. May you be one of the servants being trained in your house, minister wherever you come from. That there is some specific training and there is a specific work that is going on so that after one year, two years, being there, You've gone through discipleship, programs, conferences, seminars, equipping manuals, and all kinds of stuff. And we are helping our ministers to not just preach sporadic messages, but some time to try to put it in writing so that there is a way in which believers can follow. Glory to God. So that they can be able to say, we have done A, we have done B, we have done C, now we are on D. And by the time we get to F, we can cast out devils than before. But we shall say that in the pastor's conference. When this minister's conference comes, that's when we shall be sharing those kind of points. Born in his own house. 318 trained servants. Look at the next verse. These guys, the Bible says of them, he divided his forces against them by night. And he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Hobar, which is the north of Damascus. These guys who are trained servants, they are now given another name. They are forces. Ah, they are forces. They can be mobilized at night. By the way, can your pastor mobilize you at night uh, to do a spiritual operation? If you cannot be mobilized at night and be available, you have not reached that level of receiving and operating in grace that flows from that pulpit. Okay. Today we are dealing with meat. This is not the message of take it, take it, reset. No, this one is training and empowerment. Glory to God. That you'll not just be a trained servant, but you become a force. A force. Do you know what a force is? Those are highly powered, highly trained special forces. Listen, even within the police force and security forces, we still have some special groups given some special name because of some special training. These ones were trained in Israel. Maybe the Reke. I don't know within the army what they call the little ones. If you are in KDF, you can tell us. As if it's not uh, illegal for you to tell us. Some of the special forces within the KDF. You know, they are firepower. These are the ones when they come in, they do their work with precision within a short time. May you be trained as a believer. Don't be a general Christian, general member, a general mama. 
No, B, join the special forces in the house of God. If there are some special financial enterprises that need to be done, you are highly trained to financially sip those gaps and breach. If it is prayer, you have a precision. Your prayers are the kind that can crack the problem quickly and move the mountain. You are special forces in the house. Glory to God. If it is serving, you can be mobilized within a short time because you are flowing in the same grace in that house. Thank you, Jesus. Then they went and did the operation and they delivered a lot from that trouble. You can read the rest of that. And so he brought back all the goods and, and brought back his brother Lot and his goods and as well as the women and the people. Uh -huh. On and on. <laughs> Let's read a few more verses. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shabez. Uh, Shave, uh, that is the king's valley after his return from the defeat of Chedolama and the kings who are with him, uh -huh, 18, and then Melchizedek showed up. Hey. Every time you go on an expedition, every time you go, you've done your battles, you've done your successful work that month, and you've been paid your check, and you're back with the goods, Melchizedek shows up. Yeah, because he's looking for 10%. Melchizedek is about to show up. Some of you have kept him outside your door for a week. He's still waiting for your tithe. He's still there and you haven't released him. Release your tithe so that Melchizedek can leave. Hey. Every time, Musa, when you sell your stuff and so forth and you make your millions, praise God, that's the level I'm talking, Melchizedek shows up. Yeah. Melchizedek is a type of Christ in the New Testament. These are all pictures and symbols. Glory to God. Because our giving goes to Christ. Those men who eat, who eat, they eat on behalf of Christ. Because he is in heaven and he is no longer eating. We are the ones eating on the ground on his behalf. May you, you or whatever be eaten by somebody. Kaya Basoto. So Melchizedek shows up. He's the king of Salem. Brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God. Mosai 19. Something happened. And he blessed him and blessed Abraham and God Mosai. Possessor of heaven and earth. Glory to God. 20th. I mean 20. And blessed Mosai who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. By the way the tithe is not part of the law. It came before. This was before Moses. The tithe is like marriage. Marriage was there before in Genesis 2. The, the beginnings, the marriage, tithe, and these foundations were there before. So all those internet preachers telling you tithe is the Old Testament stuff and the law, they need to come to this class. I think Leon in Mezusha Sana. You know, Leon in Mangumi, Mangumu, Mangumu. Tafadali, receive the grace. All right. Thank you, Jesus. He gave him a tithe of all. So, my focus is, look, Abraham has trained servants. And tonight they are called forces. Those men, when they went to Sodom, they succeeded in their mission and they brought back Lot. That means they were able to flow with the same grace. And in fact, in that operation where these trained servants who are forces were involved, if we read a verse before, verse 13, go back to verse 13 before the 14, you'll find some other men who Abraham used. Now, those who had escaped came and told Abraham the Hebrew, for he dwelt by the terrible trees and Mamre, the uh, terrible trees of Mamre, the Ammonite, Amorite. Who is that guy? Somebody say Mamre. Brother of Echo and brother of Anna. For they were what? Allies with who? With Abraham. Every pastor needs allies. You need to create alliances with the Mamro, Eko, and Anna. So Abraham did not just do that operation of delivering Lot alone. He called upon his allies to help him in that operation. May you also know who are your allies in business, who are your allies in your career, people who can be mentors, people who can give you words of wisdom, praise God. 
Even if you are mama, there are other mamas who also are your allies. These are full of the Holy Ghost. They are wise. They are women of faith. They are not gossipers and mamaras and complainers. You don't need that company. You need company of arsonists, people who are walking in the spirit. They can speak to you and you get a word of wisdom that will help you in this spiritual battle. These are allies. Glory to God. So, because allies will be able to flow in the same grace, like Abraham. Let's make it easier. Go to First, First Samuel 22, verse 1. Let's find another strange church. Strange church with strange members, and we are going to see how these members went through a transformation and how grace flowed after some time. Those people received the grace and the abilities that was on their leader, and later they became a great people. The Bible says, and so said, 22 verse 1, brother, uh, 22 verse 1. Uh, <clears throat> God bless you. Uh, David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. So when his brothers and all his father's house had it, they went down there to him. They went down to him. Praise God. What's, what happened? Verse 2. And everyone, look at the people who came around David. And everyone who was in distress. And everyone who was in debt. Hey. And everyone was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them. He became their pastor, became their leader. And there were about 400 men with him. My God. What a church of 400 people. Everybody in distress, depression. Everyone in debt. Uh, everyone discontented. There are the people gathered around David. When they give offering, you can't even count it. After the service, they tell you, Pastor, ukituacha pata nyumbani atuwezi kuenda. So hile ka ufaring doa ulitua, unawapea kila mutu fair. Wenda nyumbani, wenda nyumbani, because they are in trouble. If a pastor hasn't experienced that, you have not been trained in ministry. That uh, when the offering was given, you give it out as fair. Don't worry. Some of you are given fair those early days. But now, praise God, you are now established. Your affair now, your offering is the one being used to for the new ones. But this was strange company of people. It looks very desperate. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look like these people can amount to anything. Yeah? You can read this chapter. I was reading it yesterday night. It was very funny. You know, these kind of people. Look at verse 3. And so David went from there to Mizpah, Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, let, please let my father and mother come here with you till I know what God will do for me. Because now, he has a very strange group with him. He now needs God. We'll see what God will do with me. Now, the rest of that is beautiful. Go to Second Samuel chapter 23, and we'll see something amazing. Second Samuel chapter 23, from verse 8. From verse 8. It's another amazing story. These are the names of who? The mighty men of who? Of David. These are the mighty men that David had. My God. So, they are no longer the discontented, the distressed ones. They are no longer the ones in debt. Now they are called mighty. What happened? There must have been transformation. There must have been a series of trainings, a series of expeditions and adventures and walking with David, hearing the Psalms, hearing the songs, hearing prophetic words. David in the process of running here and there and then they stay in that cave and they light a little lamp. What do you think they were talking? They must have been sharing some things. They must have been talking. And in the process of all these sharings and talkings and so forth, some of these men that were just ordinary, some change began to happen. Grace was transferred to them. Divine abilities began to come to them. Courage. How many of you know David? When he was 17, he manifested a great uh, quality of a great soldier, a great man of God. When he slew Goliath, I tell you the truth, everything shifted about David. Until so began to ask whose son is he? Because when God begins to use you, even in the spirit situations change. Glory to God. And profiles. Hallelujah. And so when David killed Goliath as a young man, 
the journey for him to be a mighty man. Remember he had spent years in the wilderness, the back side of the desert. God was preparing him, hearing from God, writing psalms, speaking in the spirit, learning on his ten instru- stringed instrument. And David was going through a lot of stuff. By the time he hit Goliath, David's life shifted. Of course, battles became more and so began looking for him later. He wanted to kill him, but God protected him because of the anointing. Hallelujah. Later, the men who came around to tell you, after he had come through all those journeys, those men could now receive grace and could be impacted by David. Praise God. When we're talking about accessing grace, there are about four words, four basic words that accompany the things that you access. Number one is grace. Number two is anointing. Anointing. Number three is power. Glory to God. Anointing. Power. And number four is spirit. Somebody say spirit. The spirit of God will come upon you. The spirit of God that operates in the man of God will also come upon you. You can access it. Glory to God. And the power of the Lord in the man of God can also be your power. Yours in Jesus' name. The grace in the man of God can also be in you. The anointing can also be you. That's what we're saying, accessing grace. And how is this going to come? By a relational connection. You love each other. You walk together. You're always hearing the person. You're always in that environment. You're always in that company. Praise God. You're participating in what's going on. You are always there. You're like Elisha and Elijah. You're like Timothy with Paul. You're like Titus with Paul. You are always in that company. You're like Ephaphroditus. You're like Tychicus. You're like uh, uh, Cyrus. Glory to God. You're like all these men and women. Aquila, Priscilla, Ephaphras. You are uh, Sospatas. You are around all these men walking around with uh, Paul, the man of God. Elisha with Elijah. Joshua with, uh, with uh, Moses. I tell you the truth. If you're Having the attitude to stay on, no matter the storms, no matter the battles, no matter the changes of life, and you are in that environment, you will access grace. You will access grace. And you will become mighty. These are the men. Some of the names we can't even mention. But the word mighty for them is better. Because what is Joseph Beshibash Beth? Takomonite. Or something. Takmonite, chief among the captains. He was called, uh, he was called Adino, the Enzite. I think it's a good name. Mama Adino, Baba Adino. Instead of his, these other strange names for witches and sorcerers, I think this is a good name, Adino. Because he had killed 800 men at one time. Wow. Right now, you can't kill a mosquito, but if you continue to receive grace, one day, Karozaga. Lift your hand and say, one day, I will operate as a mighty man. But in the New Testament, every time you hear a time is coming, that one day, we also put a disclaimer, and that time is now. Lift your hand and say, now is the time to move with God's might. Are you aware God's anointing is a killing anointing? Elijah killed 450 prophets of who? Of Ba. Then he threw a mantle one time and Elisha was called. And Elisha had 12 oxen. What did he do with the oxen? He also killed the 12 oxen. Okay. Well, that's a message for another day. Let's not chase rabbits. Let's go back. Look at verse nine. These are the mighty men. After him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo. And that's another good name. Dodo, Mama Dodo, Baba Dodo. The Haho Height. Hey. One of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle. And the men of Israel had retreated. These three men never retreated. Jesus. May, may you be one of those kind of people in your local church. It doesn't matter the battles that show up in that church. You don't retreat. You stand with the man of God. 
Today I know I've not given you any story as we close. I know up today I've not given you any story. But one time I preached in a church in Ohio, Columbus. And uh, when I arrived on Wednesday to preach on Sunday, the pastor said, oh, man of God, sorry, although we invited you, we've changed our mind. You're not going to preach on Sunday. We, we are sorry. I said, what's the problem? And I'm already in your city. He said, well, because we don't have money to pay you. He provoked me. He said, who told you I came to preach for money? I told them Africa has changed. The generation that used to come preaching for offering, that generation is decreasing. There is a new generation. We bring the gospel. Hey, freedom we have received. Freedom we give. He said, okay, Lily. He said, so you can, I said, I can preach for you without even $10. I didn't come for nothing. I carry the kingdom. He said, Lily. He said, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, you will preach. So now we waited for Sunday. About 200 people in the church. This guy was a friend of T.L. Osborne. They used to travel in Asia together and all that. In the church, uh, I didn't know what had gone on because they never told me. Me, I just went and came on Sunday. But because of what I smelt, I smelt there must have been a problem. So I also said in the Holy Ghost, Lord, give me a word that can bring alignment in this house. And I didn't get anything big other than Isaiah 35. The desert shall blossom. The wilderness shall rejoice. How do you have a wilderness rejoicing? How do you have the desert blossoming? I knew here, I'm calling those things that are not as though they are. I spoke the word. I spoke the word when I finished. Because there's only one service. There's no other service. So you do everything in one service. So I began to pray for them. And they lined up, about 20 people. And the anointing rested upon me. And I began prophesying to them with precision. Juju, 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 installing God's word in their spirit. And then at the end of the story, of the, of the line, there was this shosho. She held my hands. She was an old American lady. She said, young man, man of God, before you pray for me, listen, I'm ashamed of being in this church. And she shot a question. How can a mushrika say I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed of being in this church? So, and because I was not expecting that, I also shot back to her. I, because I smelled there was something. I said, all right, whatever happens in the church, and people do all kinds of servant leave, but even then, there must be a few people who will stand in and stay in the church and support the vision of that house. And I said, you are one of them. She said, okay. I said, you don't go nowhere. Stay here. She said, okay. All right, now pray for my son. So I prayed for the son. We finished. Went to the office. Service over. And the pastors were taking a cup of tea. He said, man of God, do you know? Who is that you prayed for last? I said, well, just an old lady. He said, listen, that lady, <laughs> when she pays one tithe, we are able to pay all the bills of the church the whole month. <laughs> but she stopped giving four months ago. That's why we are struggling financially. And the church split recently, and we lost almost 150 people. That's why we have no money to pay. I said, okay, now rejoice. She is back. So in a few weeks, we can expect your finances to come back. I said, although there is something wrong, you should not have the church just supported by one person. Because the devil can kill that one person to trouble the church. Glory to God. But anyway, the church was healed. After a week, when I was back home, I received an email. Man of God, we are okay now. <laughs> of course, they never sent me no offering because that was our deal. Because we are paid by Jesus. And he knows your location. He knows your address. He knows who did not honor you where. And he can send an angel to visit you. And he clear the balance. Praise God. What are we saying? That the grace of God in David transformed people that we would call as a Kenyan, Budekabisa kind of people. They became mighty warriors. If you read, Kwani would talk about books. God bless you. If you read that, we don't have time, you read that at your own time. Read the names of those guys and the things they did. You'll find one guy who defended a whole acre of skuma. He was defending lentils. He was defending that one acre alone, saying no Philistine can step here. May you also defend a field. Look at your neighbor say, you can access grace that will take you further 
higher and deeper. Tell them that.